Welcome to Taking the Biz. If you're a first time watcher on this channel, you're gonna find a series of tutorials that help A-level business students with their revision. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at an HR measurement known as the labor turnover percentage. It's quite simple to calculate. All we need to do is take the number of employees that leave an organization over a time period, and we're normally talking about a year, and we're gonna divide that figure by the average number of staff that the business may have working for it during that same time period. And the reason why we take an average is because for some organizations, they don't necessarily have the same number of employees working during every month of the year. So we take an average and have a look at how many on average they've employed during the course of that year. When we've done that sum, we're gonna multiply it by 100 and that's gonna give us a percentage. And what that percentage is gonna tell the managers of the organization is what percentage of their workforce have decided to leave the organization during the course of the year. Now in a moment, what we'll have a look at is some of the negative consequences managers might experience if that percentage starts to creep too high. And it's certainly a number that managers will be very keen to monitor and analyze. But first of all, let's take a look at some of the reasons why employees might have left an organization during the previous year. The first couple might be quite natural in that employees might have retired or they might have been made redundant as part of the restructuring of our organization. But there can also be some reasons why employees might leave the business that managers would really want to know about, that managers might really want to try and rectify or might try and want to address the concerns that this high labor turnover raises about the organization. So the first of these could be because the business has a poor recruitment and selection process. Maybe people are leaving the organization because they were the wrong person to have hired in the first place. Maybe they were an inappropriate choice. Maybe they don't have the skills, the qualities needed to succeed in that role. And maybe that leads to them becoming demotivated and them leaving the organization. Or maybe because of competency issues, we even have to jettison them from the organization ourselves. But either of those reasons strikes to the heart of the fact that we have got an inadequate recruitment and selection system that's leaving to people not surviving in the role for at least 12 months. So it might be that we need to try and redress that as part of improving our organization. But there might be other reasons why employees are unhappy and end up leaving the business. Maybe it's because they're disgruntled about the level of pay that they have achieved. Maybe it's because they're dissatisfied with the training that they're being given and they feel that they need greater investments, greater skills in order to be able to perform their role. Maybe they've become dissatisfied with the management or the leadership shown in our organization and it's led to motivation issues. Maybe they even feel that there aren't adequate career progression opportunities in our business. They feel like their pathways to promotions are blocked or non-existent and so that they feel they want to go and work for somebody else. But all of these reasons that employees might have for being unhappy in their job and wanting to leave our organization are issues that managers may want to know about. And if it's causing too great a percentage of our workforce to leave the business year on year, it might be something that they want to try and address and rectify. Now, the number of employees that might leave an organization that would constitute a high turnover of staff is gonna vary from industry to industry. It might be that if perhaps we're a supermarket and we make use of employing lots of students who naturally progress to different pathways like higher education, we might acknowledge that we're gonna naturally have a higher labor turnover than firms in some other industries. But as a general rule of thumb, if the percentage of staff leaving during a year is pitched somewhere between 10 and 15%, that would be a typical figure. And remember, a small turnover of staff can actually be advantageous because it might mean that new staff come in, perhaps even from external sources, and they bring with them new ideas, new impetus, new motivations, new innovations that our business can benefit from. 
Trouble is, if too great a percentage of our workforce are leaving the organisation during the course of a year, it can have some ramifications that can be quite negative. Now, the first couple of those are to do with increasing the firm's costs, because if we're having to replace quite a high percentage of our workforce, then there's going to be recruitment costs. There's going to be the costs of advertising new positions. There's going to be the cost of employees taking time off their normal jobs in order to conduct interviews or assessment centres. And so that's going to have a financial cost attached to it. But even once these replacements have been recruited, there's then going to be some training costs involved as well. They're not necessarily going to join the organisation with the same level of skills as the person that they're replacing who's left our business. So we might need to invest in training, in qualifications or courses for them in order to bring them up to the required skill set and that's going to come at a cost. There can also be some quite negative connotations for the organisation if our labour turnover figure is too high because it might affect the people who are left behind and haven't exited the organisation. If we've got high labour turnover because of things like redundancy, then it might mean that the people left behind are very fearful for their own job security and it affects their morale. Or if it's because of the unhappiness of staff, others who are left behind might start considering their own position and wonder why so many of their colleagues might have left during the last year. So it can certainly affect the productivity, the morale of our existing workforce that are left behind when too great a percentage leave during the same year. Can also raise some question marks as to whether we can carry on providing the same level of quality or in service sector industries, maybe the same level of customer service if too great a percentage of our workforce leave during the same year. It might be that having to replace quite a significant number of our employees means that there's a settling in period where employees are perhaps not quite at the same skill level, are not quite at the same level of training, and so the quality that they can achieve in their production, in their output, the customer service levels that they are able to deliver might not be as high as the employees that have left the organisation. So that's certainly a concern for managers when labour turnover is rising or is too great. The other concern might be how it reflects on us as an employer. Employers are very keen to ensure that they have a reputation as being a desirable business to work for. It helps them in the recruitment of staff. It helps them in competitive labour markets to get the very best employees to apply for jobs with their business and to take up positions in their organisation. But if we've got a great percentage of our employees leaving the organisation during a typical year, then our reputation as an employer, our employer branding is going to take a hit, it's going to get damaged because employers are going to, employees, sorry, are going to look at our business and think, why are they unable to keep many of their staff? Why are so many of their employees leaving the organisation during a year? So it's going to hurt our employer branding, it's going to make it more challenging for us to recruit the best members of staff for vacancies that we have, and that's going to have knock-on consequences for the quality of operations that we are able to deliver. So labour turnover is a really important element of assessing the performance of the HR function of the organisation. Really important to revise how we calculate it in case we're asked to do that in the exam, but also the consequences of the figure being too high and the benefits of being able to reduce it. So good luck with your ongoing revision. As always, keep on taking the biz and we'll see you soon for another tutorial.